The hydropower dam that was constructed in the late 50s on the St. Lawrence River had a very significant impact on the habitat of the river. As you can imagine, there was once a, um, a 10 mile torrent of white water and then it becomes a lake. Mind you, it's what we call a fluvial lake because the, the water is constantly flowing through it. But nevertheless, the, the water levels have been maintained abnormally high over the past 60 years now. And that's had an impact on the wetlands in the area. Um, however, the types of wetlands that developed because of the tight regulation of the water levels has been monotypic stands of things like cattails. And so in those type of wetlands, the diversity is not as high as it could be. Uh, the, uh, the fish aren't able to, uh, to breed inside these wetlands because the cattails are too dense. Uh, and so what they want to do is, is create more of a natural type of water regulation plan. It's called Plan 2014. With Plan 2014, the water levels will follow a more natural cycle. So in dry years, the water naturally will go lower. Wet years naturally go higher. And by following that, they can get back to a more natural system. So right now, there's about 30% more wetland than there should be in the St. Lawrence River. We have two experiments that we're doing right now. One experiment is a long-term data set water quality data that are being collected on the St. Lawrence River at the Moses Saunders Power Dam. And so we have instruments that are placed inside of the power dam and measure water as it flows downstream. And by doing that, we're able to make a number of different observations. And ideally, when Plan 2014 becomes invoked, how the changes in the water level can actually affect water quality. The other experiment we're doing is, is measuring how much mercury and nutrients are found in the wetlands of the St. Lawrence River. Because what we're concerned with is that in the future, when we start eroding the wetlands, like we want to get back to the natural type of wetlands, we want to reduce about 30% of the current amount of wetlands in the river. There is historically legacy amounts of mercury, phosphorus, and sulfur in these wetlands. And so when we erode those 30% of the wetlands, that means that material, those nutrients in the case of mercury, that contaminant, is going to get mobilized into the river. We, this summer, have determined how much mercury will come out. And we need to keep in mind that that mercury has to go somewhere. Is it going to get in the food chain? Is it going to go downstream? Uh, we don't quite know yet. And this all comes back to the, the, the management of the river. Uh, in order to manage our water quality and uh, aquatic habitat, we have to understand it. We understand that we need to reduce the amount of wetland that's currently in the river, bring it back to the more natural levels, which opens up the diversity of habitats. However, what we don't know is the rate at which the mercury that we know now know is in those wetlands. How fast will it get in the water? If it gets in slow enough, then we can say, hey, it's not going to have much of an impact. It'll be essentially um, uh, dispersed effectively, but if it comes out in large amounts, um, it, can, it can affect um, the amount of mercury found in fish, more so than right now. And so we can protect humans by saying we are going to have new fish advisories for the St. Lawrence for a certain amount of time while this mercury gets eroded out of the system. But there's other animals like mink, like osprey, eagles, which really don't follow fish advisories.